Introduction Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about books, science and the future. My name is Rahul Thakur and today I'm going to review the book Keep Sharp, Build a Better Brain at Any Age by Sanjay Gupta, a renowned neurosurgeon and CNN chief medical correspondent. This book is about the scientific and practical guide to keeping your brain young, healthy and sharp throughout your life. In this video, I'm going to give you a summary of the book, discuss some of its highlights, critique its strengths and weaknesses, and share my thoughts and opinions on the topic. I hope you enjoy this video and find it informative and entertaining. Summary The book Keep Sharp, Build a Better Brain at Any Age was published in 2021 by Simon & Schuster One. It has 336 pages and is divided into four parts. Part 1, The Mysteries of the Brain, Part 2, The Threats to the Brain, Part Thread, The Science of the Brain, and Part Waff, The Future of the Brain. The book explores the mysteries and possibilities of the brain from a scientific and practical perspective, using the latest research and discoveries in neuroscience, psychology, and medicine. The book also provides a comprehensive and accessible guide to protecting and enhancing your brain health and performance based on the current and emerging technologies and trends. The book's main themes are the nature, origin and evolution of the brain, the relationship between the brain and the body, the potential and limits of the human brain, and the ethical and social implications of improving and empowering the brain. The book's main arguments are that the brain is a dynamic and adaptable organ that can be shaped and improved by our lifestyle choices, that the brain can overcome and prevent many of the common diseases and disorders that affect it, and that the brain can create new realities and experiences that will enrich and transform our lives. Highlights The book is full of useful and practical tips and strategies for keeping your brain sharp and healthy. Here are some of the highlights that I found most helpful and interesting. The book introduces the five pillars of brain health, which are based on the acronym MIND, Move, Discover, Relax, Nourish and Connect. These are the five key areas that have the most impact on your brain function and well-being. The book explains the benefits and the science behind each pillar and provides examples and suggestions on how to incorporate them into your daily routine. For example, the book recommends that you move your body for at least 150 minutes per week, discover new things and challenge your brain every day, relax and manage your stress levels, nourish your brain with a balanced and brain-friendly diet, and connect with others and build meaningful relationships. The book describes the Shaya P way of eating for a healthier brain, which is based on the acronym SHARP slash sugar, hydrate smartly, add more omega-3s, reduce portions, and plan ahead. These are the five simple rules that can help you improve your brain health and prevent cognitive decline. The book explains the effects and the science behind each rule and provides examples and suggestions on how to follow them in your daily diet. For example, the book advises that you slash sugar and avoid processed and refined foods, hydrate smartly and drink water or tea instead of soda or alcohol, add more omega-3s and eat more fish, nuts and seeds, reduce portions and eat less calories and more fiber, and plan ahead and prepare your meals in advance. The book discusses the best exercises and activities for boosting your brain power, such as aerobic, strength and balance training, learning new skills, playing games, and meditating. These are the types of exercises and activities that can stimulate and strengthen your brain cells and networks and improve your memory, attention, and creativity. The book explains the benefits and the science behind each exercise and activity and provides examples and suggestions on how to practice them in your daily life. For example, the book suggests that you do aerobic exercises like walking, jogging, or cycling for at least 30 minutes per day, strength exercises like lifting weights or doing push-ups for at least two days per week, balance exercises like yoga or tai chi for at least 10 minutes per day, learn new skills like playing an instrument or learning a language for at least 15 minutes per day, 
play games like chess or sudoku for at least 10 minutes per day and meditate for at least 10 minutes per day for. The book debunks some of the common myths and misconceptions about the brain and aging, such as memory loss is inevitable, crossword puzzles are enough, and supplements are effective. These are some of the false beliefs and assumptions that can limit and harm your brain potential and health. The book exposes the flaws and the facts behind each myth and misconception and provides examples and suggestions on how to avoid them and replace them with better practices. For example, the book reveals that memory loss is not a normal part of aging and that it can be prevented and reversed by improving your brain health and lifestyle, that crossword puzzles are not enough to keep your brain sharp and that you need to vary and challenge your brain with different and novel tasks and that supplements are not effective for boosting your brain function, and that you need to get your nutrients from natural and whole foods. The book presents the latest research and evidence on the prevention and treatment of brain diseases, such as Alzheimer's, dementia, and stroke. These are some of the most serious and common diseases and disorders that affect the brain and impair its function and quality of life. The book explains the causes and the symptoms of each disease and disorder and provides examples and suggestions on how to prevent and treat them with the best available methods and interventions. For example, the book shows that Alzheimer's and dementia are not caused by a single gene or factor, but by a combination of genetic, environmental and lifestyle factors and that they can be prevented and delayed by improving your brain health and lifestyle, that stroke is caused by a blockage or a rupture of a blood vessel in the brain and that it can be prevented and treated by controlling your blood pressure and cholesterol levels and that there are new and promising therapies and technologies that can help restore and enhance your brain function after a brain injury or disease, such as stem cells, gene therapy and brain implants. Critique the book is a valuable and comprehensive resource that covers a wide range of topics and aspects of the brain and its health. However, it also has some limitations and drawbacks that need to be considered and addressed. Here are some of the critiques that I have for the book, its methods and its conclusions. The book relies mostly on the scientific and medical perspective, which may not be sufficient or adequate to capture the full complexity and diversity of the brain and its functions. The book also ignores or dismisses some of the alternative or complementary perspectives and approaches on the brain and its health, such as the psychological, social, cultural and spiritual perspectives and approaches, which may offer different insights and solutions for the brain and its challenges. The book also fails or refuses to acknowledge or address some of the controversies and uncertainties that surround some of the topics and issues that it discusses, such as the definition and measurement of intelligence and consciousness, the validity and reliability of some of the tests and tools that it uses, and the ethical and moral implications of some of the technologies and interventions that it proposes. The book relies mostly on the anecdotal and personal experiences and opinions of the author, which may not be generalizable or applicable to everyone and every situation. The book also lacks or provides insufficient evidence and arguments for some of the claims and recommendations that the author makes, such as the effectiveness and safety of some of the exercises and activities that he suggests the accuracy and relevance of some of the statistics and data that he cites, and the necessity and feasibility of some of the changes and actions that he advocates. The book also overstarts or understarts the benefits and risks of some of the practices and products that he endorses or criticizes, such as the impact and importance of some of the lifestyle factors and habits, the quality and availability of some of the foods and supplements, and the potential and limitations of some of the therapies and technologies.